Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome. I don't know why that uh, first part of that first hello didn't come through. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Learn Dota 2 League Season 16, Week 4. Today, taking a look at Reedy, taking a look at Dusty. Last game, Dusty's draft just got swept out of existence. Just built Everybody else popped off except the person that they were building their entire team around who could not have possibly done anything, even if he had. Which is a very sad situation to be in. See what happens this time. Reedy once again starting off just by bringing the hammer down on Dusty. And again, you can't really argue with that too much. You know, let's just look at the facts. Maniac's not a mid player. Doughboy is one of those plays every role equally guys. You know, as far as the core trio goes, Dusty is definitely going to be the guy to think about on this uh, team. And this time, the Reedy lineup is going to say, Okay, that Undying was super annoying to play into last game, so we're taking it this time. Conversely, Dusty is going to ban out the Spirit Breaker, make sure Giraffe doesn't get another go at that. Dusty, unfortunately, now in the situation where they have second pick, which I think is not what you want this patch. I think in this patch, especially before the change, you really want first pick. The hero parity is so dramatic that having pick number one, having pick number eight is just fine. Just what you want. Because there are some heroes you just can't really counter pick. Especially not in the LD2L, where you don't necessarily have the pools to do that anyway. And having second to last pick is just fine. So it is pretty much nothing but upside right now for first pick. Dire team pick. Lich. Lich coming out here. Never very much to say about Lich. He's a fairly generic one as far as the support line goes, but it's Dying certainly going to be easy to say. It's hard to find a bad Lich game. You will very rarely find a match where it's like, wow, Lich doesn't do anything good here. Bloodseeker, coming out very early. I don't know if I like the look of that. We've seen um, Coffee Cat on the Cranberry Sprite team fall a little bit into the trap of uh, trying to pick up an early Bloodseeker every lineup, every game. and I don't think this hero is in the position where you can do that. If you don't have a pretty good early game, he is one of the harder heroes to catch up with. You know, Bloodseeker compared to most Paws 1s, he needs a lead. If Bloodseeker has the same amount of gold as the enemy Paws 1, you're in a bad spot. And he's, you're certainly in a bad spot if Bloodseeker has the same amount of gold as that Paws 1. Who does not care in the slightest about anything Bloodseeker does. Even if she gets ruptured, she has no problem just standing still throwing out arrows and abilities. Now you can get something to capitalize on that fact. You can get something to capitalize on the fact that you can uh, pretty reliably make sure that Medusa's going to stay still. But I mean, that's a horrible matchup for Bloodseeker. In particular, one of your biggest upsides as your pause one, it, as a pause one Bloodseeker is going to be your percentile damage. Except Medusa doesn't have HP, so your percentile bonus damage is going to be like nothing against her. It's a really bad matchup. They're definitely going to have to make something good out of it to go forward. Interesting to ban the Pit Lord. I think it would have been really good for this lineup, actually. You run the Pit Lord with the the Bloodseeker here, and at the very least, when Medusa's ruptured, you can at least drop the Pit Lord's uh, Q on her head. Just force her to take a load of damage. Either you stay in the Firestorm and take a load of damage, or you move around with a rupture and take a load of damage. And worse yet, Lich has uh, got some positional hoo-ha, so he can just throw you right back into it. Very odd ban. I guess just Dusty hates playing that hero, so that's probably why. Anti-Mage Darkseer knocked out. Not too surprising there. That is... With, with the Pit Lord also being knocked out, that's... Three of the four that had a positive win rate against Medusa in this match, now uh, eliminated. Radiant team back. Storm Spirit is Radiant not here. No sniper. Must have heard about my uh, musings in the at the end of the last game. 
No OD. It's again targeting J Bay. It's a little interesting. I don't know if I like the OD in this game. I mean, I know J Bay has it as one of his most played heroes, but, you know, as I said before, I always felt like it. it even though he loves that hero, it, it really does not mesh all that well with his playstyle, nor his team's playstyles, I tend to find. He's good at it. Don't get me wrong. He will definitely do very good at an OD game. And there are also some uh, one-armed wrestlers that do really well for themselves in the Olympics. If you get my drift. Shoutouts to all the uh, one-armed wrestlers. Not to say that there's anything wrong with being in that scenario if uh, somebody in your life is in that particular boat. It's just, you know, even most one-armed wrestlers would probably admit, yeah, against an equal foe. It's not going to go quite as well. Snapfire is coming out. They must have heard Kitty's comments on how this draft went. Like the combination of Bloodseeker Snapfire, that is something where they can uh, they can utilize that rupture now. It is not it is no longer literally just for you know keeping somebody still. Now you either have to stand still and eat a Snapfire ult, or run away and eat Rupture ults. And if you're slow and or unlucky, you can do both and just die like instantly, which is always fun. It's also, of course, good against Undying, and as I said before, and as I'll say again on this cast, despite what a lot of people think, it is for a lot more than literally just killing the Tombstone. It's been a minute since Season 14, and you might not have heard me say this on the other channel, so I will say, you know, Undying likes these long, drawn-out fights where the enemies are all relatively close to him, where he gets to steal a bunch of strength, where he gets to make everybody bathe in the Tombstone, where he gets to uh, sustain with the Soul Rips. Snapfire is going to stay very far away from him and has a lot of great tools to engineer a very short, dramatic, and decisive fight. So to that end, uh, even outside of Snapfire just being able to instant blow up the Tombstone, still just not what Undying wants to face. It just disagrees with him on a very philosophical level. I will say, as far as the danger pick goes, that was a good Radiant hero to throw into it. Crystal Maiden. See, I'm coming up now. It's a little interesting. I don't think I like this CM pick that much so far. It is a stun. They do definitely need a stun. No argument there. It's just, all she does right now is just restore mana for Medusa. Which would be great if you had some ability to make sure CM doesn't die in one and a half seconds every fight, which so far you don't. Could turn it around, though. Gonna be hard with all the good pause threes that are knocked out. But it can be done. As I always say when I see a puzzle on Bloodseeker, Axe never a bad guy to pick into that. Gets Bloodseeker to uh, stand still instead of moving around it to... Uh, the sort of speed usually associated with stock cards. And of course, um, Bloodseeker, very much a glass cannon. He will die a lot faster hitting you than you will blade mailing him. Of course, we have the Bounty Hunter coming up here instead, which uh, you know, somehow made it this far without getting banned. I like the Bounty Hunter this game a lot, actually. He has a lot of annoying things to do about the Bloodseeker. He has a lot of annoying things to do to the Lich. And sure, he's going to lose Invis when he gets thirsted, and that sucks for him. But it's going to be, so far, it's going to be a little tough to get him to that point. PL coming up here, not a bad pick. Does mean that we're going to be throwing the Bloodseeker somewhere else with a safe lane, which is honestly probably for the best. No idea where it's going so far, mind you. Most likely mid, I think. Ten seconds remaining. I almost like the PL in this game. It's almost really good. It's another thing CM can't do anything about. It's a hero bounty hunter is kind of bad at killing, which is always nice. He can easily kill the PL if he knows where the real thing is, but he basically has to get himself killed to figure that out if he's alone. So if he, see if, if he's in the jungle, he sees more than one PL, he just kind of has to keep on walking by. Never a good thing. But... You're still going to have to have everything come together to kill the Medusa so far. 
And the Undying can very easily be a big pain in your ass for a very long time in this game. Like, sure, great, you're, you're pretty good at killing the Tombstone, don't get me wrong, that's awesome and all that. You're also very vulnerable to getting eaten up by the Tombstone if you don't very quickly kill it. Team fights turn into a visual nightmare if you don't quickly kill it. Interestingly, they're going to ban out the Morph this time, thinking about, uh... Perhaps a snap fire there. They don't want a snap fire with literally zero stats and uh, more flinging around with a million. Or perhaps they're going to be thinking about running uh, one of the other members of the Universal Hero Pool here at the end. It is most likely Pause Three. It's going to be picking, going to be getting picked up here. Bloodseeker seems very far from uh, Dusty's style. Dusty would be like, "That's a bloody new hero, isn't it?" So. Is most likely going mid. Maybe Timber Saw coming out? Timber wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Stand up to Undying in the lane. I mean, losing strength sucks when you're Timber Saw. Don't get me wrong, but you don't care about the uh, zombies as long as you don't get stacked up a billion times. You're fine. Just kill him in one second. You don't really fear anything from Medusa ex except like a billion damage snake bounce, which you can just position around. It's another thing that goes well with the uh, the Bloodseeker ult. You can just throw the Chakram on the ruptured guy. Dire team pick. Has but he sure hates seeing that hero. That's a mid-dark willow, what the hell? Okay. Well, he kind of hates seeing that hero. Let me let me correct that. He hates seeing the Bramble Maze. He is fine with everything else about this hero, basically. Five seconds remaining. That Bramble Maze is enough of a pain in the ass. He still kind of hates to see that. Still don't think it's the worst idea here. Let's see what they ultimately decide to go with. I got leaving it to the last second. Oh no. Oh god, these guys are gonna lose. Dusty, you can't be picking this guy. I promise you can't be picking this guy. I mean, we can start by looking at the upsides. Here's the good news. Um, the, uh... <laughs> the Mars can, um, well, they can kill the Dark Willow. You know, if your concern is that you couldn't kill a mid-Dark Willow, there you go. You could also probably get the Bounty Hunter if you happen to run into him. Here's the downside. Dark Willow can turn your arena into as much of a hell for your team as uh, it is, is hell for theirs. Undying is something you don't like playing into. Crystal Maiden, unless you kill her quick, is also kind of something you don't like playing into. And if the Snapfire dies before you throw out the arena, eh. I mean, you still have the Lich Holt, I guess, but... You have the, uh... I don't know. I don't like it. I don't like Mars ever. <laughs> Listen, Valve does not want to see this guy... At the competitive level, they have nerfed him to smithereens just so they don't have to see him anymore. You've got to buy into it. You don't design Dota 2. You cannot argue with that fact. <laughs> At least his last match was a pretty convincing win, as I'll see. Good luck, have fun. Prepare that Seeker sticks out so much from this draft. It definitely feels like they, um, at some point, just took a hard left on this draft concept with the Bloodseeker. Like, it just, you know, okay. So you got Mars, who stops you from uh, from running away. PL, who's going to only really do all that much in Arena. Snapfire, who's going to only do that much in Arena. Lich, who's going to only do that much in Arena. Bloodseeker, whose entire contribution to an arena is hitting W on it, who actively doesn't want you to use an arena. I don't know. Not the most sensible flow there, I must say. Does not feel like, um... 
Does not feel like Beryl is ever going to stop singing whatever he's singing in all chat. I hope he's singing this on the mic while it's happening. Oh no, he's not. But he better start. If you're a barrel writer and you're listening to this cast right now, you've got to start just singing these songs in, in your mic. You've got to start s singing them in all chat if you can somehow, but, you know, that's not been added to this game yet. I like the uh, the combination of Bloodseeker positioning himself aggressively for the first blood rune and having thirst leveled. Something funny about that. The battle begins. Right click contest! Sabo wins! Uh, Reedy ain't gonna win, though. Everybody's kinda here for him. Yeah, that's awkward. Getting Medusa there. Not the best situation for Medusa. At the very least, she's gonna be able to TP into lane before the creeps get there. Make sure it doesn't mean all that much. They still did just give a bunch of gold to the person you're laning against. For free. I wonder how a Bloodseeker in Dark Willow mid matchup is gonna go. This is a very abstract matchup. You don't expect necessarily to see this one. At the very least, it is going to be very difficult to get Medusa into a position where, you know, last game, you know, Reedy on the PL was able to 1v5, was able to basically just, you know, he was the death timer for them. The second that, uh, maybe, maybe, uh, death timer is a bad thing to say in Dota where you have another thing that's called that. So let's say he's the doomsday clock in that game. The second PL came, even something that remotely looked online, the uh, Radiant had no really more any any more chance to win. Even if Radiant had been like farming up more, there was not really an ability to do something about that. This game, if literally the only thing you care about is the Medusa, you actually do have a pretty solid lineup for dealing with that. That's the good news. Here's the bad news. You need a stun for CM and Molsky's Grandmaster on this hero. You need to do something about this bounty hunter and this is GRS main hero. Dark Willow is going to be able to screw up your abilities to uh, get the one Medusa. And j -Bay is playing it for some reason. It's because he likes his waifus, I guess. You know... There was a one point where uh, a good friend of mine, who from outside of the Dota 2 sphere, I gave her the Dota 2 smash or pass. And you see, it's a woman, that means it's not weird and uh, and screwed up. And Dark Willow was second place. And Dusty is... Oh no! Oh! Oh, the comm line! If Dusty doesn't turn around, that cookie actually probably saves him there. We can definitely just kill the uh, the zombie. Find his ankle. Get rid of that. Not great. Didn't mean to get rid of the stat panel out there. If one thing you don't want to be doing in a lane against Medusa, it's uh, dropping falls to her. Even if you have a decent answer to her in the PL. Let's just see it like this, so... Even though PL is logically a good matchup against Medusa, just remember... Four heroes, positive win rate, and uh, none of them look like uh, a funny man with a spear. Poor Lich is just getting beat up every time Bounty Hunter's uh, skills on cool or skills off cooldown. Molsky, of course, is not going to let this uh, Sentry Ward stand. Oh, PL actually drops an entire Q on the uh, tomato there, and Molsky still gets it. Very sad. PL is second place for net worth, but he is losing some of that gold sometimes to the bounty hunter, who is right on his tail. Hey. 
Seek are getting quite walloped here at mid so far. As da nine last hits down, Being such a dramatic amount down at this point is a little hard to stomach at five minutes. It is kind of likely at this juncture, I think, that Bloodseeker may spin this game, being a walk and talk and rupture in silence. Well played, says Phantom Lancer to something or another. No. Oh, okay. We're getting pretty low here. But they currently have uh, the vision advantage, so Giraffe is not going to be able to do much more. Let's see him getting the Arcane Aura rather early here in this lane, which is good. You have a Medusa on your team, you'd be nuts not to, but I still see people not doing that sometimes. Oh, Medusa's in an odd spot. Hey, you're one, Medusa. Oh, no, 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 never mind. Once again, the Undying here is just completely in char charge of a lane. Now Dusty's feeling it instead of Giraffe. Okay, this, uh, this is the end of Maniac here. Okay, we did not see how old Bliss went down. Oh, just Bounty Hunter existed at him. Bit unfortunate. Way more unfortunate for Bloodseeker than it was for Lich. Again, I don't know how much a Dark Willow is going to do as a mid, unless you, like, absolutely rock and roll dominate with it. But this is a good start as far as that goes. Top last hits in the server by nearly 10 last hits. 17 last hits more than the enemy lit mid. 10 denies more, well 11 denies more. And uh, is now just uh, running in on Dusty here. Oh, uphill miss. Dusty's just gonna waste as much time as possible. Though once the uh, bedlam comes out, he soon finds himself going to bed. Maniac has learned from previous missteps and is not going to go get himself killed doing a yank this time, which is good. He definitely needed that power play. He definitely needed that power play. It was good for both sides at mid there. J-Bay got a decent valuable kill. And the, um, okay, what, what happened here? This guy lost seriously three-fourths of his health in no time flat. Not the nicest game to be Lich. The bounty hunter has a vanguard. We're living in the clown world. It's not a bad pickup by any means. I mean, PL is going to struggle to really do anything to him for a very long time. I mean, consider the real PL is just doing barely more damage than the um, than the Vanguard is going to soak up. When he's not dashing with his Phantom Rush, he's doing 9 damage whenever uh, Vanguard blocks damage. Oh, wait, no, sorry. That would be the Crimson Guard. Still, he's doing very, very little damage. Maniac going to go down once again here. Meryl is going to come in to try and get the revenge kill. It's actually looking very likely to get it, yep. Meryl does get the revenge and walks away with a nice chunk of money here. Interesting fight recap, considering all three of those deaths happened at very different times. Denied. Gonna instantly get a deny here. It's a good turnaround kill. Maniac is not even looking like he's back on the board yet, but it is a good turnaround. Okay, yep. Mm, just TP back in. Instantly die. Don't even have the rupture this time to do anything more. 
Lich is going to TP... No, he's not even going to do that. Both supports are going to think about TPing in and stewarding the lane, but nobody wants to just feed this Dark Willow more, and at this point, that's all they're looking at, realistically. Just dive in here at top with the assistance of this Undying. This is really bad. This is a Medusa team, and they are rocking the house early game. It's nine minutes. There's already a 5k net worth advantage. It's not too uncommon to see, like, 20 minutes there's a 5k net worth advantage. Quick, hit your mana, or hit your mana, hit your clarity. Dusty stayed! Beep! You fool! Medusa decides she doesn't care about clarity mana anyway. What's it happen to her? Yeah, I mean... You look at the net worth chart here, it's just linearly in favor of the Radiant. Comically, Undying is dangerously close to overtaking even the top Dire core. Oh no, bro, this looks... this looks so hard. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Dark Willow is sitting on almost four times Lich's net, va net worth value here. Dyer's middle tower is under what about the uh, level advantages? Oh, nine levels! It's ten minutes! There's a nine level level advantage. This is looking really hard. It's not even like... Oh, they're gonna... I'm gonna put the Spurs to Giraffe here. Really great use of the um, Dark Willow Wall to try and at least buy him some life, but all they're gonna get for in response is Maniac. Sabo has taken a very aggressive position here, but not gonna be able to find anything more. Just slightly unfortunate. 879 gold passes right into the Dire War Chest, a lot of it on Bloodseeker, who is making some space between him and the Undying, so that's good. The only downside is you're the top core on the enemy team from Undying, and you're running away from that support net worth. I mean, you guys are hitting. What do you do? What do you do? Radiance top tower is under attack. Dark Willow is going to have herself a rod of Atos. Radiance top tower is going under to have attack. one more annoying thing for the. What's he gonna be dealing with here? Giraffe likely doesn't realize he's walking into five. They gotta be honest. He probably shoulda. Noose is gonna walk through with all just to make sure uh, this guy gets to go home, and Dusty's gonna tank it. Dusty Giraffe tip each other. The Rod of Atos comes out on top of the Snapfire, but it's kind of unlikely anything more comes out. Dark Willow makes yourself intangible to the casters. Why is that a thing? Snapfire tries to ult. It literally lasts a half a second. Dark Willow does a good job leading the um, Bloodseeker into the... Uh... Man. Man, if I was Dusty this game, I think I'd be crying myself to sleep tonight. PL is at least going to get a uh, free tombstone, which may be the legitimate upside of this entire exchange for the Dyer. Dusty's going to go down again. This team fight's been like a minute long, and Dusty has died twice in it. Oh god. 1,994 gold changes hands at 12 minutes. 13, really. We have a 10k net worth lead. This is the team with the Medusa. The team with the Medusa has the 10k net worth lead at 13 minutes. Bloodseeker is at least closing in on that javelin. God, the saddest thing, he probably loses this 1v1 right now. If he goes up to Reedy and tries to 1v1 him, Reedy's sitting there at 100 mana, Bloodseeker loses. I mean, look at that! He just lost like half of his HP to one snake. He already has to run because g might be nearby and he's right. g was. 
But this man, when he has to run, he has to run all the way to spawn <laughs> to not die. God, this, this is like one of those battles that happens the very last year of a war. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Barrel Rider is gonna get- oh my god! Oh, that just makes me shiver. What, that's not Lich. Okay, I was like, why does Lich have a Wraith Man? This is Lich. This is all you have this game if you're Bliss. You have a pair of Tranks, you have a Ring of Basilius, and you have- oh my god, it's 15 minutes this man's level 5. And he just took a Wisdom Rune! Oh, they're gonna get the g Raph again here. Ooh, smart play, but Lich was in the exact wrong spot. I do think Bounty Hunter might be getting a little overambitious here. It's been a while since he's gotten himself a really good clean kill, and he's going... He's getting very obviously desperate, going very deep here for very dangerous kills he's not very frequently able to get. J-Bay does not see the PLT being away there, and as a result has no recourse to stop it. Here's a pro tip, if somebody's trying to uh, jump into trees in your Dark Will, you just used your uh, brambles right there, just throw your uh, fear right at that thing. Boom. Bada bang, bada boom. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Cause, I mean, he's not gonna walk out. I mean, you'll know he's gonna walk out anyway. You can just cancel it. Everything is good in the world. PL in the GG jungle. PL has uh, finally surpassed the enemy's pause for for net worth. Just barely. This will come in handy. Bloodseeker getting bullied by Bounty Hunter here. You know it's you're in a great match as as uh, Bloodseeker when it's 15 minutes. You can't win a 1v1 with anybody on the enemy team. <laughs> The old circle comes out here, courtesy of one Medusa, who, uh, you know, Medusa's lane was bought, that's where she's staying, baby. I mean, why not, right? Illusion. Rainbow of TPs comes out here, looking for the Dark Willow, which, in fairness, will be a very large kill. Snapfire ult is even going to come out here. This is Desperation Incarnate. Maniac just died somewhere off screen. They are actually going to get the Willow here. But she just she just lives through the whole arena and then kills the uh, just kills the oh man she is like out of everything though she's completely out of resources here begging and pleading for the uh, undying to suddenly be from the reality where he got a uh, a holy lock at this game. He does die, but holy crap, he got double the money that his death was worth for that one kill on Willow. Downside is Bloodseeker got, or Undying got so much money back on him that now Undying is in fourth place on the net worth chart. The first Radiant team, or first Dire team member at all is now in fifth. You know, they say no news is bad news, unless you're on the dire of this game, in which case all news is bad news. And nobody says all news is bad news anyway. Certainly the case here. This is where I'm at when I have to do solo cast people, please. <laughs> when I send out uh, a message like, hey, somebody record with me, you know, I do mean it. Okay, the... Uh, Real PL has gotten actually tracked out here. He is just immediately running for a T2 tower, but the creeps are right here. Maybe not where you want the tombstone. The support line is going to come in here and try to do something for this bounty hunter, but they're just going to get themselves killed as well. Again, g Raph definitely getting overly ambitious here. He's really got to understand at this point, when this team is this down, there's never truly going to be somebody alone. 
even even in the GG jungle, PL is not going to be farming without four pairs of eyes on his own team on him, trying to make absolute sure that things don't go badly for him. You know, every time he seems to break his uh, vision, every time he seems to break his invis over here, things just go bad. I think he just needs to be working with, um... And really, at this point, he just needs to be working with J-Bay. He needs to just be standing ten steps in front of J-Bay. Just like like he was a support bounty hunter, basically. As tragic as it is to say. Standing ten steps in front of this guy, just scouting out for this Dark Willow. I'll be clown people like this, for example, you know? This is a good example of what bounty hunters should be doing this game. It would be nice if they communicated. Well, that's a good start anyway. Bloodseeker's just gonna rupture the Dark Willow. Then get feared away. Everybody just kind of right-clicking away in general at this point, as the entirety of Dyer just gets behind T3s. So on one hand, you know, it's good news. They, uh... They did at least lose nobody for that. They wasted a lot of ults and gained nothing on the Radiant. Downside is, is that now they feel... The Dyer feels very pinned in this T3 area. It feels like they're very pinned here. PL making moves, along with a few other members of his team over here. They do know where PL is. They're not really playing like they know where PL is, though. Everybody is playing the stand as far away from PL as possible and secure the enemy jungle game instead. Which I can't say I'm that big of a fan of. This game is 21-7, and Bounty Hunter can't get any Deso stacks. I've been here. This is a very... This is a very relatable scenario for me. At least he's... At least this century is about to expire, I guess. Funnily enough, Sabo does not have any, uh... Nothing for you. Any sentries of his own, which is a bit questionable. Definitely feel like he should be, uh... Carrying some around, cause you you know there's gonna be um you know there's gonna be anti vision for the bounty here. Well, vision two, get rid of rather I suppose I should say. Bliss is scouting for the oh this is interesting this could actually steal the this could steal the tormentor yeah it did nice oh man that was so good. The snapfire ult steals a tormentor arena gets rid of the um the dark willow. Very good play on Barrel Rider's part there. And has put the Dyer in a very awkward situation. They just lost their number two net worth core. At a point where, you know, Medusa's good, but she's not where she wants to be quite yet to just start 1v5 in people. So at this rate in a game like this, she's definitely going to be able to. I was talking about, oh, Medusa's not going to be able to 1v5. No, not th this game. She's going to be A-OK -okay doing that. This is not what you want to happen after a big comeback kill, though. Immediately on the retreat again. Great spear! Everyone on the Radiant is so slow. Every time the Dyer right clicks away, they get away with it. Medusa just picked up the butterfly here. Going for the Scotty next. You want to see something sad? Medusa, level 15. Lich level 8. <laughs> They're getting, uh, some form of farm at the very least in the dire, but, you know, even a camp like this, the only person who can safely really take it. Mr. Stusty, can we pee? No, dude, we can't pee. There we go. I don't. I don't really think. I don't really think it's particularly viable to get rid of the Medusa at this point. Feels like it's just so hard. I mean, PL still support line to your net worth even after all this time. JB was paying attention. He could have just killed this T2 right here. Just legitimately. It's exactly as much as his uh, right-click damage is. Okay. 
Well, I guess there is a way to uh, kill the Medusa if she just stands around in the enemy's jungle at literally no mana for no reason. Reedy looking to put the G back into his name, I guess. No, you guys are winning, but it's not by that much, I promise you. Of course, revenge kills immediately come out. Bloodseeker immediately dies for it. It's always one step forward, two steps back. It's like... Hunt with this with the dusty lineup in this game, they are getting these occasional really good, nice, clean pickoff kills on the Dark Willow, on the Medusa, especially on the uh, Bounty Hunter. The problem is, is that every single time they get a kill on one of these guys, they outside of the Bounty Hunter, sometimes the Bounty Hunter really does just go down for nothing. But every time they get a kill on the Willow or the Medusa, the Radiant immediately just claws back and takes one of the... Uh, Dire Corps is taxation. Creeps knock out T2 uh, top here. Undying got this holy locket, so we'll no longer be living in the reality where uh, Dark Willow dies because she ran out of mana at an awkward time and <laughs> Undying can't do anything about it. Mine. This is a depressing PL. Huh? A what? What the hell is that? Who did... Who... Huh? Wait a minute, what? I heard a BKB. I know I heard a BKB. Who the hell did that? Just business. Nothing personal. Who even has a BKB? It's just... Oh. Oh, Maniac. You know, I get that. He's probably sorting, sorting out his inventory. That was his nine second PKB. You hate to see it. Oh, you hate to see it. I wish there was some kind of protection. Um, BKB, when you're moving it around so that doesn't happen. Because I will say, that's happened to me. It's not as bad as the time uh, I accidentally sold my eggs on Tiny. Back in the days when, you know, that was how you got your tree, you just picked it up forever. Not as bad as that time, but... <laughs> Molsky actually had to ult to take out Tormentor here. At the very least, he does walk away getting his own shard. gonna help his ult. Really, I mean, stunning out Radiant Course has been such a priority. Nobody's really been able to stop the Crystal Maiden ult at all so far this game. Now, oftentimes the Dire have been able to just right-click away from the CM ult, but, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Leather spoons. What an odd sponsor. There must be some kind of strange British thing. Uh, PL in this uh, GG jungle. Oh! Ooh, that was so good! This is... Okay, good dodge there on PL's part. They're actually, in general, very good response for this. But oh man, it's just so hard to kill anybody, and here comes a deuce on the DD! That was such an awesome counterattack on the part of the Dire. And all that happened... All that happened is that they just lost the original person who's getting ganked anyway. That's it! Oh wait, no, sorry. They also lost Snapfire. Maybe time, uh, maybe time to call it Vex. I don't know. Okay, this is not good. Well, it's fine. Gonna pop BKB, get out of here. Jay, okay. Dying gonna try and keep the creeps alive on the uh, push up here. 
does not quite get what he wants done, but the catapult lives at the very least, which is more than enough. All that Mara Spear hits is fake Medusa. Like, very aggressively for somebody with no BKB. I mean, sure, he's got a team, but look how much it helped. Buys back, tries to TP to his death. Thinks better of it, though. It is 28 minutes, and Dark Willow is doing this. This is a cool four-man arena. And look at how much it... Giraffe. Look at how much it's doing. You know, it's never a bad thing when an arena gets a kill on the enemy mid, you know? Except... That was a kill on his own mid. That's all that arena accomplished. PL just... Fallen down like he's made a cream cheese linear gold advantage in the favor of Radiant. Top dire lower than bottom Radiant at this point. Cool Lich ult. Doesn't feel like it means anything. They just cannot get through the sustain. Barrel Rider calls the G's. We're going home. Barrel Rider calls Hex. And we're going home. Two nice short games, which is good when I have to cast three sets in one day. Oh! I mean, there's really not that much to say here. Again, both games, the dire mid felt like it stood out like a sore thumb, and it didn't really end up helping them out much. Except last game, the dire at least won. <laughs> the dire at least won that game! You know, uh, this Bloodseeker early pick go flex it mid thing did not seem like it was destined to succeed. I mentioned earlier how hard it is to come back if you go down as Bloodseeker. He was never even within sniffing range of any of the enemy cores. He ends with half of Medusa's net worth. I mean, you have a Bloodseeker who's just got knocked out in lane and couldn't turn around to get the job done. Very far from Sundance's, far from Maniac's, um, real natural pool here. I just realized, I don't think I did a, I don't think I did a rundown of the Dusty lineup, whoops. Um, here, pause one, Doughboy, on PL this game. Pause two, Maniac, also known as Sundance, also known as Bloodseeker. Pause three, Dusty Mars, pause four, Bale Rider, Snapfire. Pause five, Lich, used to rhyme with Chris, now rhymes with nobody at all on the Lich. That almost rhymes. But yeah, I mean, this was just a straight-up route. It did not feel good. It could not have felt good to be the uh, Dusty line at this game. You've got a mid, you could not rely on the form of the Bloodseeker, who got knocked out early and just had to spend the entire game playing for the back foot. You had a Mars, who did exactly what you expect Mars to do, which is get a couple of early game kills when people go too far out, get themselves in the arena, and no other contribution. And you have the PL who is sitting there with a support tier net worth the entire game. I don't know. That just did not... It was not a good day to be the Dusty team. Maybe their minds were out of it after game one. Who's to say? I know I'm not. If you or somebody you know wants to learn Dota 2 at a casual or more competitive level, go to ld2l.gg today to sign up. It's too late to get into this season, but there is plenty of space for stand-ins. Even in a game like this, we still had a stand-in. I don't think there was a single stand-in free game this week. Um, so plenty of places to stand in. Plenty of people to record with who don't like doing solo casts. You know, all kinds of fun to be had. And with that, we'll be seeing you next time. Unless you're me, in which case you'll be seeing you right now.